Good evening and good news for viewers who've seen all 154 episodes of this programme. Nurse will be along with your medication shortly. <laughs> In the news this week, despite his mayoral election success, sales of Ken Livingstone's autobiography remain stuck at one. <laughs> In Hampstead, Patsy Kensett and Liam Gallagher enjoy a quiet afternoon in the park. <laughs> and in Westminster Cathedral, the mystery of the empty communion wine jar is finally solved. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team, a presenter who recently reminded us I haven't read the news since 1982, something of a disadvantage on a topical news quiz, Angela Rippon. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight as an MP who's come down from his home in Liverpool for the evening, although he's asked us to point out that the show was actually recorded last night, so his house isn't empty at the moment. <laughs> Peter Kilfoyle, MP. So, round one is where the show starts beginning to commence. Ian and Angela, your arresting images. Oh. Well, that's, that's the ground force team at work, isn't it? Um, <laughs> they're doing a makeover, I think, on Parliament Square. And, oh, yes, there's Charlie Dimmock, look, wearing a very <laughs> fetching... Uh, they called it guerrilla gardening. Guerrilla gardening? Yes. An attempt to put a lot of vegetables in the centre of London, which they did. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, although it all turned ugly, didn't it? Yes. It did, when all those people tried to get a Happy Meal. <laughs> We can have a look at one of them. <laughs> well, the police are leaving her alone because she's not, not carrying any Tibetan flags or any <laughs> protest equipment. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one protest... Well, they don't offend the Chinese when they come over, but they don't mind offending the rest of the country. Well, um, the people... Sorry, that's a bit serious, but it is true. Mm. Ah! You wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> You just made a funny noise then, are you? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a robe, is he a robot? <laughs> well, what we'll probably do is to edit out the serious point and just keep him going... <laughs> 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 so how did Tony Blair spend May Day? Peter, were you aware of what he was doing? Uh, no, I wasn't, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, he doesn't make me up and let me know anymore. <laughs> uh, he wrote a 975-word letter to the Sun. Mm. And the 975 words in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you resigned as Defence Minister, didn't you, earlier this year? Sort of, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it was only a joke at the time, but uh, <laughs> you didn't see the funny side. Right. So did you celebrate May Day this year? No, I didn't, actually. Mm. No, mowed the garden. Just so the burglars could get through easy while I was away. <laughs> And Angela, did you dance around the Maypole in Devon? Is that where you live? No, I actually live in central London, which means that you don't read the news much either. <laughs> actually, be before we go any further, can I yes. just check something? All right. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going to explain to everyone what happened then? Y yes, I, I read somewhere that mm. um, one of the critics always thought that you looked particularly well deodorised on this programme, and I was just checking. <laughs> and, um, and what's the verdict? Mm. <laughs> one of the critics said the other day, I don't wear any underpants. <laughs> So this is the uh, day of so-called guerrilla gardening uh, in Parliament Square. <laughs> Within minutes of forcing his way into the McDonald's, uh, one rioter had handed out over 300 hamburgers to the crowd and was later named McDonald's Employee of the Month. <laughs> <laughs> there was widespread criticism from the government at the destruction of the Whitehall branch of McDonald's, especially from John Prescott, as he now has an extra 400 yards to drive to get his lunch. <laughs> Peter, your votes, please. All oh, right, yes, this is the, uh, the mayoral election. 
Uh, there's somebody voting for it. Um, that's well. This is wrong because you weren't allowed to fold. She's folded. You, you weren't meant to fold. They, didn't they tell you today? Don't fold. Mm. She's folded. There's Ken. Um, he hasn't folded. Um, <laughs> Stephen's folded. <laughs> there's Susan Kramer, the Lib Dem, and uh, probably next we'll have dear old Frank. There he is. <laughs> there we are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't really want to be mayor anyway. Well, that's just as well. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to be, but not Frank, he didn't want to be mayor. Um, How really? loyal are you on this one, Peter? Uh, not very loyal at all. Really? Um, Who are you backing, then? Uh, nobody. I don't live in London. I mean, it's Yeah, you've got to have an opinion. I think everybody recognises it was a cocker. Full stop. But Including never... Tony? I think he does now, yeah. yeah. Be a first. How you repair that or something else. Do you think he'll work alongside him, or...? I think he'd like to work over him. <laughs> <laughs> so do people in Liverpool care about this at all? No. No. <laughs> so would you stand for Mayor of Liverpool? No. You're top of some of the lists. Is that right? Yeah, independent on Sunday. Have you above Scylla and Jimmy Tarver? <laughs> Um, yeah, what are some of Ken's policies, then? Ken for mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Vote for me. Yeah, once he's in, what's he going to do, then? He's going to laugh there, for forever. weeks and weeks. <laughs> yes, this is the long-awaited end to the London mayoral election. Uh, the votes were counted at 14 different centres. According to the Times, the results were transmitted Eurovision Song Contest style uh, to the Queen Elizabeth Conference Centre, hence the 14 different versions of Dobson Mille Point. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Dobson claims that if he had, in fact, been elected mayor, it would have created 100,000 jobs. That's for pigs in the aviation industry. <laughs> Ian and Angela, anchors away. It's Ken's victory rally. Yes. <laughs> and, oh, yes, it's the Aurora, isn't it? p &O's wonderful new liner, which uh, broke down with its German engines. <laughs> it's as tall as Ben Nevis, apparently. <coughs> mm. I have a theory that Ben Nevis might have floated longer than the Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> well, it fell over. What, it Ben Nevis over. or the Aurora? Yeah, no, no the, the ship sort of fell over in nautical terms. Fell over. Is that the nautical term for a propeller going, falling yeah, over? falling over. <laughs> Captain, the, the ship's falling over. <laughs> <laughs> do you know anything about ships? Uh, slightly more than you do, by the sound <laughs> well, well, tell me what you know about ships. Uh, they have a propeller, which they refer to as the propeller. <laughs> oh, well, I bow to your superior knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realise I was dealing with a matalo. <laughs> <laughs> What was the bad omen for, for this craft? But even um, they tried to launch it with a traditional bottle of champagne and the bottle of champagne didn't break. And that's bad luck. It is bad luck and we can see it now. It's Princess Anne, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> they got the champagne back, though, because Princess Margaret <laughs> dived in. <laughs> This is the uh, new £200 million p and cruise liner. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> which broke down or fell over. Mm. Um, <laughs> according to the Telegraph, the ship left on Monday in a shower of streamers and ticker tape and was back on Tuesday to have the streamers and ticker tape removed from around the propeller shaft. <laughs> and finally, in this round, Paul and Peter. Somebody mowing the uh, lawn. Oh, it's uh, President Bill Clinton washing oh, the car. Yeah. This is the video, I think, that he made, didn't he, for the uh, Washington Correspondent. I wish I could be here more, but I really think Bill has everything under control. Wait, wait, wait! Wait! For God's sake! I want to thank the Academy for this tremendous honor. This may be the greatest moment of my life. I mean, ever since I was a little boy, I've wanted to be a real... <laughs> He was very good, though, wasn't he? Very natural, and uh, people are wondering what he's going to do now after his, uh, his presidency finishes at the end of this year, is it? The end of this year? Yeah. Uh, January of next year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he might, go in, he might well go into show business. He's made a big impact. 
You're a big fan, then? No, not particularly, but it's, it's taking a leaf out of Reagan's book, because Reagan sort of, like, was a disaster in many ways, but because he was a whore, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> People sort of, you know... <laughs> he's a bumbling man. And the, the, the point of Clinton's video is to say, look, I'm not just a lame duck president with nothing to do. I'm not just preparing Hillary's lunch and looking in the mirror. Mm. But he's obviously got a lot of time to make stupid videos, hasn't he? <laughs> well, stupid just... video? Do you not approve? I just think the idea of a president making a home video and the whole of Hollywood saying, you are fantastic, Mr President, you should be running our industry, you could be an actor. Just... What's wrong with that? He's having a bit of fun. It's sad. It's sick of He's what? had a bit of fun. What we all sad? <laughs> we heard the tapes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is um, the video made by Bill Clinton entitled The Final Days. Strangely, one or two excerpts from Clinton's term in office were not given the parody treatment. For example, he didn't amusingly complete a crooked land ownership deal or cheerily order the bombing of Iran or fire off a series of hilarious quips whilst being lightheartedly fellated by an intern. <laughs> So, uh, at the end of that round, these scores are like Bobby Davro's impressions, both exactly the same, being as it is for all. <laughs> Round two mixes the major tabloid news stories of the week with the inability to recognise them. Paul and Peter. Mm -hmm. Naked chefs. In the buff. In the buff. That's what it's called. Yep. It's a collection of recipes. And um, they've got high society ladies to pose draped with food. Yeah. And who are these um, the high class ladies? The Beaufort Hunt. Is it the Beaufort Hunt? The Beaufort Hunt, yeah. yes. Uh, this is Nisha Hibbert, in fact, the art director of the book. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes. Uh, Any more? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's Emma a Thomas theme, isn't there, yes. really? And uh, where is it available, if anyone was wanting to get it? Uh, in all good shops and booksellers. Uh, under the counter. Interestingly not. No, it's only available at badminton horse trials. Can uh, horses play badminton? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's while they're having the trials to find out if they can do <laughs> So, who's contributed the recipes? Because that's the other Prince idea, Charles has contributed a forward to this book, I believe, as well as a recipe. Mm -hmm. And a fantastic picture of him with a banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a button mushroom where the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> <laughs> but weren't you very rude about the royal family? Um, was I rude about the royal family? Yeah, well, you, on NBC TV, you no, said... No, they were I no, I wasn't rude about that. No, no, I didn't say they were spoiled brats. No, no. What I said was that in certain people's opinion, they leave a spoiled and privileged lifestyle. So are you distancing yourself from this opinion? It's not yours. No, I'm just telling you what I did say, which is what you right. asked me. Mm. OK, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, Do you want to go out with Andrew? Press <laughs> <laughs> chatting her up. I mean, the rest of us can carry on with the programme, if you like. Uh, this is the uh, women of the Beaufort Hunt, uh, who've uh, posed nude for a charity cookbook called In the Buff. Uh, Mr Charles Farquhar, uh, master of the hunt, claimed he wouldn't be getting undressed for the cookbook, saying, I wouldn't want to frighten the horses. It sounds like Mrs Farquhar's got nothing to complain about. <laughs> Ian and Angela. Bad luck, Carol. This is Carol Vorderman, isn't it, showing that she didn't brush up on her Shakespeare mm. and not winning, uh, what was it, a quarter of a million? Yeah, she, she got to 125,000. Mm -hmm. the, the quarter of a million question um, involved Twelfth Night, was the answer. How did uh, Carol then describe Shakespeare, controversially? Um, oh, dull as ditch dull as water. water. Yes, mm. which yes. was a bit sour grapes when you've just failed to get the question right, isn't it? Yes, from the presenter of Better Homes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Good noise, Angela. Yeah. <laughs> Do we all get to make a noise on this? I like to think so. Yeah. Yes. Which, what's yours going to be? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I may I should make you know those sirens that you get, like the I think on fire engines, that very camp siren they've introduced in London the last three or four years. You, you know, you're sort of walking down the street. And suddenly you go, <laughs> <laughs> well, this way it should be like get you at the end of it. <laughs> oh, we're off to a fire. <laughs> what was the other big question for Carol? Oh, about uh, where's the Gobi Desert? 
Uh, no, actually, I was thinking about the big question that the papers asked the next day, which was, what on earth was she wearing? Oh! Right. <laughs> or indeed, how do you make a top out of a tractor tyre? <laughs> She, uh, she wouldn't, in fact, allow us to use a photograph of her uh, wearing that top, um, so we noticed that it was the same top that she wore at the Brits, so we used a photograph of that instead. <laughs> <laughs> and who on this panel had anything to do with uh, ITV's Dave Promise, Angela? Well, I think I did, Yes, Ian. I think you might have done. What did yes, you do? I did a twirl. Yes, with a very good-looking young man from English National Ballet. That's you out of the picture then, Angus, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good-looking young man from English Ballet. Green with jealousy. He, he may not be a firefighter, we don't no. know. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming a, a ballet dancer is going to be straight and the firemen are all camp. I don't know where you... <laughs> uh, yes, this is the celebrity version of uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Who's featuring... got the hose pipe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've left it back at the station. <laughs> Right, come on then, let's do Swan Lake tonight. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. Uh, Carol Vorderman failed on a question about Shakespeare, whom she described as dull as ditch water. A mirror economist Brian Reed leapt to his defence and claimed that Shakespeare's creations are all around us, adding, Is there a little of Iago in Peter Mandelson? <laughs> Sounds like a lawsuit on the way. <laughs> Which quizzical looks mean at the end of the screen test, it's, uh, well, both teams seem obsessed with each other's score, sharing as they do six points each. Yeah, we do. Spot the difference and tell us the reason. That's what this round could have been called had it been a different game. Ian, your uh, shrinking violets are Ruby Wax, Madonna, Tony Blair, and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> He's changed, hasn't he? <laughs> That's a hole in his skull. If you look at it in one way, it could be Peter Pan's silhouette standing in front of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> With a fish behind him. Yes. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Ruby Wax is... is... I don't know. Could waiting I... for the tide to come in, but I look at <laughs> <laughs> Madonna, she's just moved to this country. Um, she wants to live um, in London. She has a house in, uh, in W11, which yes. is where you live, of course. This is true. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> Do you want to ask her for her phone number, Angus? <laughs> <laughs> They're all married to directors of British movies, except Hitler. That's right. Tony and Blair's Tony Blair. Blair. And Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it is something to do with movie directors, yes, isn't it? it? Is, because yes. Blair had a girlfriend when he was at university mm. who's the director or producer of um, American Psycho. Very good. Madonna is married to the mm. producer director of. Um, Brilliant, Angela. Um, Guy um, Lock, Lock, Stock and Smoking Scott, Barrel. Yeah. Very good. Um, she's no, married no, to no, Ed she's not, no, She no, is. No. She is. She's married to the director of she Kevin is. and Perry Go <laughs> Not <laughs> Fresh Years. In Mind which case? In which I'm case, it's the man with the hole in the head. Is the right answer. <laughs> the answer is that they've all dated film directors, with the exception of Hitler, who tried to date filmmaker uh, Lenny Riefenstahl but was rebuffed. Uh, nevertheless, Hitler was so infatuated with her, he offered to distribute her films all around Europe, saying, I'm going that way anyway. <laughs> Angela, your uh, parade of lovelies are Princess Margaret, Betty Boothroyd, Vinnie Jones, and Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> is it dancing? Well, um, it, it, it might in what be. Way? Well, well um, Cromwell banned dancing, didn't he? Mm. For the Puritans, yes, didn't like dancing. dancing. The... So he's the odd one out. Mm. <laughs> well, because none of the others banned dancing. Yeah. <laughs> She's a tiller girl. girl. Was she? Yeah. Was a tiller girl. Oh, but Princess Margaret is also um, was originally the patron of English National Ballet. Very good. Vinnie Jones used to be a ballet used dancer. To be a ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> he was the hard man of the corps. Yes, uh, exactly. We didn't want to get in front of him during yes. the padded What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the odd one out. Well, Cromwell. So it's got to be Cromwell. Is the right answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah.
Yes, uh, Vinnie Jones was indeed a ballet dancer, or at least uh, when he was a member of Wimbledon FC. Oh, they, 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 did, they did ballet training, didn't they? Did. They? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so the answer is that they've all taken ballet lessons, uh, except for uh, Oliver Cromwell, who outlawed dancing. Uh, Angela, you're, of course, you're um, chairperson, are you, of the English I will be in, in August. I'm, I shall be chairman of... Mm -hmm. in, not chairperson, uh, chairman. Chairman. Chairman, right, yes, okay. chairman. I have... No problem with my gender, and I think all that political correctness stuff is a load of old toss. I'm chairman of English <laughs> National Ballet. Angela, do you want to take over his job? You'd be very yes, good. yes, right, I'd be very out. good at it. Well, we go. <laughs> yes. okay, fair enough. Next week. Next week. At the same time. Right, same okay. time. You sit here, I'll sit there. Actually, you might have to leave it a week or two because I'm going to Australia next week. But when I come back, yes. All right. Mm. Okay, lovely. Right, so Thank we'll you. get Keith. You're not going on a cruise ship, are you? No, I'm not. You might be back a bit sooner. Yes. Oh well. So, yes, uh, Princess Margaret is president of Royal Ballet, in fact, and uh, Betty Boothroyd was a famous... Uh, um, excuse me. What's that, then? Princess Margaret was actually the original patron of English National Ballet. Ye but is she not president of Royal Ballet now? Yes, but I'm just getting in another plug for my company, that's all. Are you wanting more points? No. Yes, oh, please. Yes. Okay. Could I have another point as well? No. <laughs> um, then, no, you can't have my telephone. Oh, OK, number. right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Peter, your uh, Fab Four are Lloyd Grossman, Anna Ford, Neil Kinnock, and Tipper Gore. Um, Anna Ford and Neil Kinnock both play guitar. Well, I think Lloyd Grossman does as well. I think he plays. I think he played the guitar. And Tipper Gore, I think, went to some music conservatory to study uh, mm. music professionally. So she's the odd one out. Is that what you're saying? Um, yes. Well, no, I will give you the points, though, actually. Uh, although that's not quite the reason why she's the odd one out. She plays the drums. Ah, oh, oh, she. Uh, and, in fact, once played drums for Grateful Dead. There she is. <laughs> uh, you know a bit about pop music. You used to be in a band, didn't you, Peter? It's nearly 40 years ago. Long time. Did you play the cavern then? You must have done, I suppose. Were you around that time? Yep. What was the name of your band? The Hungry Eyes. That's I, and as in the letter I, as opposed to I, the... as in the letter I, yes. Right. As crap names go... <laughs> <laughs> you were saying Angus? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lloyd Grossman stated recently that he never travels anywhere without a Swiss Army knife, a vital piece of equipment that has 37 uses, which is 37 more than Lloyd Grossman has. <laughs> And uh, finally in this round, Paul, Sean Ryder, mm -hmm. Tommy Lee, Alan Clark, and Peter Mandelson. <laughs> well, what I know about these people, I know that Sean Ryder was the lead singer in uh, Happy Mondays. Tommy Lee's married or was married to Pamela Anderson in Baywatch. Uh, Alan Clark's got a bear standing behind him, and uh, Peter Mandelson's having sex with a Labrador. <laughs> I think the odd one out is um, Sean Ryder. Is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you'll be amazed to know uh, the wrong reason. No, yeah, I will tell me the reason. Though. Is it dogs? Uh, is it the names of dogs? Uh, in what way? They've all got dogs with funny names, haven't they? Alan Clark's got a. Um, did have, when he was live, a dog called Eva Brown. <laughs> His dog's called Bobby. Oh, uh, they've all got dogs named after political figures? The answer is that they all own dogs that have bitten people, uh, except Sean Ryder, who has bitten a dog. <laughs> 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 um, when he was working as a postman, um, he uh, bit a terrier's head and threw it back down on the ground. No. Yeah. How big's a terrier's head? You can't get a terrier's head in your mouth. Well, he didn't bite it off. Well, he's got one. <laughs> According to a fellow band member, it was one of those little terrier things, yip, 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 <laughs> rrr, rrr. It was not nice at seven in the morning. Uh, it did provide him with the lyrics to his next song, by the sound of it. Which, uh, mordant satire, uh, marked the end of this chunk, with uh, Paul and Peter uh, gaining bit by bit, ahead as they are, oh, ten-nine. Okay. Our final missing words round is just that. A simple sample of this week's headlines, including some, many or less, from this week's guest publication, The Irresistible Freemasonry Today. <laughs> Freemasonry saved my life, it says there. Mm. That's a good reason yeah. to have them disbanded. <laughs>
So let's head off with NASA alerted as what? A uh, fall from the sky. Freemasons. There, were these <laughs> there was a wonderful photograph in a lot of the papers of a young boy sitting in what looked like the Gobi Desert or somewhere with this great thing that looked like one of those things you get in a toilet cistern in front of him. Um, Lumps of rock. Large metal balls yeah, uh, is the right okay. answer. We can, in fact, see that uh, photograph. There we are. That's the large metal ball. What's he thinking there? That's the last I'll see of that rabbit. It is. <laughs> uh, next, Virgin Islands get what? Pregnant. Pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Dolby stereo joke. <laughs> when I was Canary Islands, had too much to drink, ended up being lapped on the seashore. Is that it? <laughs> get their own Television. lodge. Uh, it is from a free they, They're getting a yeah. lodge. A Masonic Lodge is, uh, uh, is fair enough. Yes. Uh, next, Nigel Kennedy feels like what? Chicken tonight. Show the violin up the chance of the exchequer. Backing up. No, oddly enough, you were complete almost. Carry right, on. But with your first guess, uh, hey, chicken up, every night is in fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and finally, Cornwall in favour of what? Cornish pasties. Uh, Raising the dead. <laughs> Freemasons. Uh, no, although it is from Freemasonry today. In uh, favour uh, of rolling up your trouser leg and jumping in the sea. <laughs> Trowels. <laughs> Beg your pardon. <laughs> Slapping a trowel on an apron. That's what they like doing, slaps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, openness amongst Freemasons. Yeah, yeah, they're a bit mad. <laughs> no, contrary to uh, how the media depicts it, uh, Freemasonry apparently involves kindness, honesty, courtesy, fairness, forgiveness, reverence and love of God. Mm. And trowels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All those things you associate with Jim Davidson. <laughs> uh, exactly. All of which uh, nocturnal emissions mean at the end of this uh, evening's unrest, this week's nightmares, are uh, Ian and Angela with 12, while this week's elected mayors are Paul and Peter with 13. Uh, but before they disappear into the night, or more likely the bar, the terminal matter of our caption competition... Uh, hello, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> it's happening again. <laughs> Come out, Frank, it's all over. <laughs> and I leave you with news that on the outskirts of Blackpool, William Hague's new campaign to woo the voters of tomorrow gets off to a bad start. <laughs> At a primary school in Windsor, a five-year-old picks the wrong day to have seconds of pizza. <laughs> And in Washington, Bill Clinton has a slight accident doing up his flies. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>